Gobekli Tepe. Just the name conjures up controversy. Why was it built? Who built it? What were the people doing there? Was it aliens? Today I'm going to discuss some recent research that just came out two or three weeks ago, suggesting there was a geometric pattern underlining three of the main structures. Hello fellow humans and welcome to the milk of Adhumla. So the current research article was published by researchers at the Tel Aviv University. And what they did was they used an algorithm based on standard deviation mapping. They found, or at least what they say, are the center points, and I want to talk about that more in a little bit, of um, three of Gobekli Tepe's most um, significant, largest centered spaces, um, enclosures B, C, and D, are tied together in a geometric pattern. Not just a geometric pattern, but an equilateral triangle. Um, so this suggests a few things, that there was more planning, um, initial planning, going on at the site than researchers initially thought. Like most of these um, ritual spaces uh, uh, from the Neolithic, this site was used over a period of thousands of years. People returned, built, built upon things, modified things. Um, but perhaps these three um, enclosures, these three um, specific parts of Gobekli Tepe were laid out at the same time and to form this equilateral triangle. So a little bit about the background of Gobekli Tepe. It's dated to initially being used at around 11,500 years ago. Now this predates what we d determine as agriculture. And I want to discuss that more <laughs> in a little bit also. It's in southeastern Turkey. Um, it was discovered initially by a farmer, I think, in the 1960s. But the first archaeology was done by Klaus Schmidt um, beginning in 1993-1994. So, yeah, the initial construction started around 11,500 years ago. It's got round stro stone structures. It's got stone pillars with animal petroglyphs um, on it. Um, some of them like 15 feet high. Um, it doesn't appear that it was inhabited year round, but but this makes sense. And there's been a lot of controversy about this um, concerning um, agriculture and like what it was used for. Well, if agriculture hadn't started yet, um, religion hadn't started yet, and what were the people doing there? Um, people only settled down once agriculture began. Th this is a false, I would say, dated uh, paradigm. Um, we have found that there were sites in the Paleolithic where people were using, people were congregating, and what was going on, it, it seems, most research suggests this, that these were being used seasonally. There were seasonal rounds. What people were doing is they were cultivating plants, okay? They had been traveling to different sites where different things could be harvested. Animals. I talked about the Mastodon site in Siberia. And... This could have been the case at the Lindemeyer site. The Plains Indians, um, especially the Lakota and other groups of, of what were became known as Sioux, even have a cosmology set up with, um, with star patterns and constellations that reflect how they moved upon the ground, upon the landscape throughout the year. And the constellations reflect 
what they harvested in different places at different times of the year. So this is what people were doing. People were moving to different areas to harvest different things. Now in this area, as you can see on um, the Google Earth map, um, it's in a valley. And this is the area where people first started harvesting different grasses and grains. So it only makes sense that they would have been coming to this area at different parts of the year to do initial weeding and possibly um, planting more seeds that they had saved, um, coming back at a, later on in the, in the year to weed, and then coming back for harvest. And during all these times, especially harvest season, well, maybe not, maybe in the spring also, where animals, ungulates would have been coming to um, initially feed on the new grass sprouts, the fresh green grasses, and then later on the, um, on the shaft and the seeds. And interestingly, interestingly, but not surprising, these were the first animals that were also domesticated. What they found at the site, bones of gazelle, oryx, and um, gazar, gazelle, oryx, and, and goats. And these oryx are basically cows. And these were the first animals that were domesticated. So this only makes sense. As you would spend more time around these animals, you would begin to domesticate them. Now, dogs had already, um, it's a weird word to even use with dogs domesticated. Wolves had transformed into dogs and been living with humans already for 20,000 years before this, this point in time. So, in my opinion, the way I see it, yeah, people have been coming here seasonally um, to make use of the resources that were in the area, which would have been the grasses and the seeds, and then the animals that were, that were feeding on them. Now, it only makes sense that they would have built a ritual space, um, because whenever people would congregate in the past, before religion was changed into an institution of control. Uh, I'm talking about paganism and um, other spiritual forms. I don't even know. It depends on what your definition of religion and being an anthropologist that, that has studied extensively in religion, there's various definitions. Before organized religion and where there's one monotheistic God and a church that was an institution, people worshipped in different ways in the same areas. Um, for example, in, in, in the Scandinavian region, people like to, uh, in the new age, modern era, era, say that there was certain rules and people worshipped this way and that way. But that really wasn't the case. In each different area, people worshipped and, and practiced their, their spirituality and their rituals in different ways. So it only makes sense that the people get would, that would gather in this area to harvest and to make use of the research, uh, resources would have had ritualistic behavior that was taking place at the site. And even shamanic behavior. Um, and that's where you start building pillars and ritualistic structures and the like. Okay, So it only makes sense to me anyway. What else did I want to say about that? Um, so the research, so as you can see on the, the white map, um, that's up in the, up beside me in the picture, they draw, a, an equilateral triangle, um, on the center points of, of these three structure of these three enclosures, these circular structures. Now, I'm not sure what I think about how they determined exactly what these center points are. And in one of them, it looks like it's not even in the center of the structure. So was this mapping kind of forced? You know, I don't know. And, and the, the sad thing is that um, this this article is not open access. So I couldn't read the whole, the whole article. I could only read... Um, 
um, from Science Direct and Eureka and, and the abstract. So I can't read the whole article. So I don't know exactly how they determine these center points. And that's that's kind of a sad thing about these academic journals that aren't open access is you can't read them unless you belong to an institution. You know, I'd have to pay thirty five dollars to read this article. And I'm sorry, I can't do that. And and to me, that's one of the problems I have with academic research is that we can't all access them. And thank you to researchers and journals that do make your articles open access. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you because we do read them and we do appreciate them. Thank you. So, you know, I'm not really sure about this whole equilateral triangle. But, yeah, I it's not surprising to me that there would have been initial planning, that there would have been geometry used. Yeah, this 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 predates the written language in the area, but that doesn't mean that there couldn't have been prior planning and use of various tools um, like cordage and um, things like bowls of water to use as levels and sticks to use to measure angles and things like that. You don't need written language to be able to do those things. So to me, again, this is really not that surprising. Um, now, the researchers say that, you know, they they say that yeah this this suggests that there was somebody in charge and they suggest that this is a little bit surprising um to me again that's not that surprising there has had been um what we can loosely call shaman spiritual leaders guides in these communities for <laughs> I'm going to say almost forever, you know, since modern humans began and, and maybe even before. And that to me, that's not surprising. In every group, there's there's somebody like that. There's people that, for whatever reason, their personality, their charisma, um, they have special gifts, um, would have been leaders or advisors. So again, it's not that surprising to me. Um, you know, one of the, a tra also kind of a tragic thing about Gobekli Tepe is so little of it has been excavated and studied. I guess as little as maybe 5 or 10% of it has been excavated so far, which is a little surprising and a little disappointing also. I'd like to see more research, especially like um, subsurface mapping and things like that, to see, get a real good um, idea of the layout of, of everything around it and more carbon dating, of course. So, you know, some of the controversies that people talk about alien visitations and <laughs> that just makes me so crazy that I'm not even going to discuss it. Sorry. Um, and I already discussed, you know, the, the link of, of religion, you know, coming out of agriculture. Yes, forms of religious worship did come out of agriculture, the idea of rebirth and things like that. But some of that doesn't even hold water. I mean, there's a lot of, of research and, and thought that suggests that that Christianity, um, the idea of, of the Christ being born, um, the Lamb of God, is more connected to um, ast astronomy um, and the position of the stars at different times of the year than it really is with agriculture. Um, so yeah, and again, uh, shamanism, magic, ritual behavior, I suggest, in my opinion, was, was, had been going on for, for practically forever in human existence. Um, and then another thing is this, this demarcation of agriculture, trying to put agriculture in a box of when it began, and you know this this is fluid and things change over different times and again it only makes sense and we're finding that more and more with with more agricultural <laughs> archaeological research that there was sites where where 
plants were being used. Plants were being propagated. Again, these people were not stupid. They knew how to live on the landscape and make use of the resources that they had. It only makes sense when you go into an area that you're visiting during different seasons and you're visiting them for the for the for the specific reason of making use of the resources that you would have helped these resources. You would have weeded. You would have gotten rid of plants that were choking out or surrounding the plant that you wanted to harvest. You would have been sowing seeds. You would have been planting other roots. This would have been going on. Again, don't underestimate the capabilities of these people. They had the same exact brains that we have. And their brains were perhaps much more active. They didn't spend their whole day doing this. They were very connected to their landscape and very knowledgeable about their landscape. Um, so again, this is, this is not surprising to me. So yeah, they would have been propagating these seeds. They would have been storing these seeds. They would have been harvesting these seeds. They would have been fermenting these seeds. And so anyway... So new research. Um, I, I'm happy to see more research. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I think it, it makes sense. Um, I, I question a little bit about the whole equilateral triangle thing, um, but I think yeah, uh, more research and more knowledge about yeah the planning that was involved. Um, more ideas and, and paradigms about what was going on at the site. And, you know, I think people just need to keep an open mind about, about the capabilities of, of these humans that were living at the time. And, that, you know, I'll say, I'll finish with saying one thing about the whole alien thing. And the reason that drives me crazy is for every, you know, monumental architecture or, or, special thing that we seem to find archaeologically people like to say it was aliens and why that drives me crazy is these people that like to say aliens this aliens that is is they're discounting the human potential they're discounting human achievement and that's what drives me crazy i like to um to celebrate the human potential and what we have achieved and the things that we were doing in the past. And it also seems to me very um, prejudice um, and thinking that, oh, only modern people that live in the 21st or 20th century could accomplish these things because we're so much better. I'm sorry, I don't agree. Um, so anyway, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. So interesting research. Um, I'll put links in the descriptions below. And there's there's um, quite a bit written about Gobekli Tepe, but please don't just click on the ones that say aliens, mysterious, blah blah blah. Um, I will um, hopefully talk some more about um, these sites because I really enjoy it. And thank you for joining me. Um, again, uh, I'm using this, this new application to try to make my videos better. I'm using this headset and I hope that helps the sound a little bit today. Um, I'm happy to get back to doing science. I really don't want to talk more about, um, the, the problems in, in the United States and stuff right now. Um, I like to focus on the things that make me happy and hopefully, um, people that can make a difference um, will make a difference. And I think it starts with your individual life. There's not much I can do. I live in Peru. I got a baby on the way. I'm an old man. My days of fighting in the streets are, are, are well over. <laughs> um, but hopefully people that can do that um, will do that. And hopefully um, we can make some changes. So thank you for joining me. Links in the description below. Please hit like, please share, please comment. And always remember humans, stay gold.